you all know that the objective of today's meeting uh, it was not to take decisions, but we discussed openly, clarified, exchanged, and agreed on, bro on uh, broad lines. This meeting paved uh, today the way for concrete steps, very concrete steps. I would like to express my thanks to Herbert Kickel, the Minister of Interior of Austria and the Austrian Presidency, for all their work to prepare and steer the discussions today. I have also to express my admiration in the way he steered this very, very difficult meeting. A lot has been achieved in uh, three years. We now need to finalize the architecture of our migration policy in order to act even better now, tomorrow, and in a longer term. The final pieces of the puzzle that I presented in September precisely aim to complete this architecture as swiftly as possible. Today, I had the opportunity to clarify some misunderstandings and assure some concerns of member states. For example, the reinforced European border and coast guard will not take over the national responsibility to protect the Union's external borders. This is, this is and will remain away from member states. When it comes to reinforcing return, we discussed how to speed up procedures and remove loopholes between the asylum and return processes. A key element in this regard is the simplified and accelerated return border procedure. For example, according to the Commission, the return border procedure after an unsuccessful asylum border procedure should become compulsory. I welcome the broad support that our proposals have received today. I therefore expect Member States to quickly reach a common position on all these legislative proposals in the coming weeks. It is time to deliver now, now that all the elements of a comprehensive migration policy are on the table. It is also time for the Council to reach a common position on the Dublin reform and the asylum procedure regulation. We welcome the efforts of the Austrian to reach an agreement among Member States on these proposals. We had also a very constructive discussion over lands. We need a comprehensive approach including internal and external dimension. This is also how mandatory solidarity has to be approached internally and externally. While we need to make quick progress on structural reforms, we also discuss the progress that needs to be made on the short-term actions. Today, I have clearly drawn the attention on where we need more commitments from Member States to implement what our leaders have agreed at the European Council in June. I call the Member States to deliver under the EU Trust Fund for Africa and to also politically support the EU negotiations with third countries as well as to engage with them. We all want to work towards less dangerous migration routes and less lives lost. This is also why our collective work on resettlement and legal pathways more generally is so crucial and must continue. I have once again called on Member States to move ahead on the revised EU Blue Card Scheme. I proposed already in 2016 to attract highly skilled workers to the European Union and improve the competitiveness of the European Union's economy. Finally, bigger challenges need bigger resources for the future. This is why we have made ambitious proposals for the long-term EU budget in the areas of migration, borders and security. These funds are crucial to help us achieve our policy objectives. I am glad that we all agree that we need to reinforce our budget for migration, borders and security, and better coordinate the use of EU funds for external actions so that we can address migration challenges in all dimensions. As you can see, we still have some work to do before the European elections, and I'm happy that the Member States remain fully mobilized to make progress on all these files. 
Thank you very much for your attention. And once again, I would like to express my thanks to Minister Kickler for the excellent way he has steered this meeting today. Thank you.